there we go guys that's cool and we'll cut a lot of us i say much love to everybody but it's kind of like you can always edit that out <laughs> if you want you know you guys know what to do this is rolling live Hey, it's Matt Pinfield coming to you from Rolling Live Studios. Now, we got together with a bunch of friends and musicians to celebrate the life and music of the great Adam Schlesinger. Now, we lost Adam very early in the COVID lockdown, but we want to celebrate the incredible music he made with Fountains of Wayne, the songs that he wrote for music and film, and for many other recording artists. The list is too long to name, but I can tell you about the great people that got together to celebrate his music. I had the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with one of the organizers of this event, who's the perfect guy to do it because he was Adam's roommate and his bandmate in Fountains of Wayne. He's a solo artist now, and his name is Jody Porter. Jody, it's great to see you, man. How you doing? I'm doing okay, I suppose, under the circumstances, and uh, it's good to see you again as well, as I don't remember the last time, but I think it was back in the hedonistic days of the East Village. Yeah, that was probably the last time I saw you, but I mean, our our friendship goes back to, you know, the early days of the band, and, uh, you know, when you were on 120 Minutes, right. and then we hung out a lot, you know, like we went out uh, to this place called WXOU Radio in the West Village. And I would meet you guys out and we would just talk about music. And Jody, I just think it's great what you're doing here, you know, for Adam. And and I want to talk to you about that. So, Jody, let's talk about you guys when you formed the band. I mean, you were originally uh, in a band called The Bell Tower, who I, I remember playing you on the radio from London. Uh, can you talk to me about when you guys formed Fountains of Wayne and, uh, and that experience? Well, I can't say that Fountains of Wayne came out of the bell tower. It came more out of Ivy, but, um, you know, I put it, I, we moved back from England in 92 or whatever it was, right? Yes. And put an ad in the voice, which was a big deal back then before the internet, if you remember. And uh, then in Watts Adam, it was like, this fucking guy's a ray of light. It was like, what, you know, it's like, what is going on with this guy? It's like, I'll see you in a couple of years from now type of thing, you know, because I knew that the bell tower was sort of closing up the shop, so to speak. We'd done our bit in England. That's as far as I wanted it to go. That's amazing. You know, I think about it now, and I remember when he was in Ivy, yeah. one of the things we talked about is how they covered Orange Juice, this song called, I guess I'm just a little too sensitive. Edwin, yeah. Edwin Collins, right? Yeah, Edwin Collins wrote that. Great song, you know. And I toured with him as well, I remember. Yeah, which is which is pretty incredible. So, talk to me about when you guys decided you guys were to form a band then, and and can you yeah. also talk about the origin of the name? Because we know yeah. Wayne, New Jersey, the Lone Ornament Shop. Uh, yeah, sure. You know, yeah. it's a pretty incredible story. But there's still a lot of people out there that don't realize it was a real place. No, it really was a real place, and just the fact they put it on the Sopranos didn't. Uh, validify it so to speak as much as our band did to put it out in the culture but Adam and I had to go around to Fountains of Wayne in Wayne New Jersey to make sure that we cleared the name and we talked to the owner right and he was like well oh, as long as you guys aren't a death metal band uh, I think it'll be good for both of us so we got the clearance and that's when we knew we were good to go with Atlantic <laughs> yeah right because you were like oh no i hope we we don't have to change and and they wanted they made oh, sure their lawyer the lawyers vetted that name and it was okay right where the name came from was bobby schlesinger adam's mom is a fantastic individual and she named the band um at a very early age before the band was even a band <laughs> and um bobby his mom says I think you should call your band Fountains of Wayne, right? Yeah. So Adam held on to that. He was like, that's the worst name of all times. I'd, I'd never do that. But then it came down to the summer of 96 when I came up to New York. That was going to be the name of the band. And it was just sort of, the whole band was a bit of an inside joke. But when you listen back to these songs, I'm getting submissions from Sean and people like that. I mean, damn, man, I'm hearing it for the first time all over. It's incredible because, you know, when Radiation Vibe came out and you guys came and did the show, 120 Minutes, yeah. we had a great time that day. 
But I mean, it was that song was really immediate. I mean, I think that you know people like myself who who just love a great song that were uh, you know involved in me at that point. I had already been past radio programming, but I was still doing a show on K Rock. You guys gained a lot of really passionate fans from the very first album too, and Amy Finnerty as well. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, Amy. Oh, Amy was, of course, ama- so important in so many places. Be rock at my request, but I think Adam had higher aspirations, obviously, and uh, off we went. And then, you know, obviously, Stacy's mom and all that. But in between all that, we made some pretty damn good sounding records, if you ask me. I'm very proud of the work we did. Yeah, I mean, from Utopia Parkway. I mean, all five of those albums have yeah. so many great songs on them. You know, working with Adam, working with Chris, and I mean, you being close to Adam through all that period, uh, did you find that, like, it was just really cool, that the work ethic that he had? Because, I mean, obviously doing that thing you do and some of the other things that um, he did. I, did. I didn't like that about the guy. I hated his work thing. I, I thought he should have gone on vacation more often because he would always take me over to St. Bart's places like that you know like, <laughs> and listen man is you know because we are the only two new yorkers in the band when we came off the road you know we had the little jet lag japan jet lag but i swear we just gravitated to like be still being on tour like you know as soon as the jet lag ended we're back on manhattan i literally spent more time with that guy than anyone i have in my life not just that we were roommates and all that, but you know, you go back to the bell tower and all that. Um, but yeah, with Fountains of Wayne, we really had that dialed in. We knew what we wanted to do. And you knew really kind of the direction, the lyrics and, and everything about those songs and those records still hold up in an incredible way. Well, first of all, I think let's, let's just, re- let's really talk about it. When you got the news uh, yeah. that we had lost Adam, uh, where were yeah. you? And, and I mean, I can only imagine, I know that I was still, I was in quarantine here and uh, in Los Angeles. Can you talk about that? I mean, uh, when you, when did you get the news? I don't know if this could be very enthralling or not, but I mean, I sort of got it pretty soon after the ventilator situation was uh, a thing. And um, I kept telling my mom, I was like, you know, you sent a fucking ventilator, dude. It's like, this is the worst. Mom was like, she tried to console me. She says, uh, um, yeah, you know, that's what they do. It's no big deal. Kind of trying to just talk me down a little bit. It's like, it doesn't sound good. Then I talked to Chris and Chris was like, uh, have you imagined the worst case scenario? And I was like, yeah, but I don't want to. And, um, he laid on it for about nine days for his daughters. I'm sure that was the reason, you know, and Alexis and everybody else, his friends. So with that said, you know, he gave it a pull, but you want me to pick on the Trump administration? I don't know what you're Yeah, about. I mean, it's just such a, you know, look, I mean, the truth is it was devastating. And for, for everybody who, who loved Adam dearly and, um, uh, you know, and was touched in one way or another. Like personally, by not even musically. Everybody, I don't know anyone that dislikes him musically at all. Maybe Stephen Malkmus, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but everybody loved him personally. Yeah, he was just it's the best friend to have. He, you know, wasn't just up there. He was the, uh, you know, the top shelf, really. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. And I, I got to say, I know that, as everybody was kind of dealing with the news and and you know just trying to at, at that point make heads or tails make sense of it sense of, it, of of just how unfair that his loss is and then you knew there was there needed to be some time for 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 the for grieving you know and but i love the fact that I'm for shock if, too and that's yeah. how i was able to sort of like do a little bit of like okay get me now or don't get me at all. I'm still sort of a little beat up by the whole fucking thing, you know? But yeah, you know, I'm glad to be doing this. I think it's a a musical send off, if that's what they're calling it. You know, I love that there was a real yin and yang uh, situation with the two of you, you know, your friendship, you're two very different personalities, two very different characters, but 
it just really worked and it was it was incredible and the yeah. fact that you had a deep friendship uh through through that entire time is just is just a fantastic it's, thing it's a shockingly good relationship that you hope for chemistry wise in a band you saw it in the beatles the stones intermittently had it but found a way and fucking had it man. there's no doubt about it but yeah it was fun and um the music was the main thing so it was like a chemistry that I seriously doubt I'll see ever in my musical career from here on out, but I'm still trying to make records as well, you know? Which I think is great, you know? Jody, talk to me about deciding on, you know, who was going to play this. I mean, there are obviously people that have friendships and relationships with Adam over the years. Talk to me about how uh, this came together. Well, I was just sort of sitting around my manager's house up here in New Jersey at the shore trying to breathe some sea air. But long story short, yeah, getting back to the Adam thing, um, it became apparent that I needed to do something because we didn't get a funeral. And, you know, I mean, like, we watched this thing that Diane and Jesse from the Barry Electric and Rolling Live did. It was awesome well, on uh, Sylvain. I'm a big New York Dolls fan and uh i just thought it was really super cool so the idea obviously went through my head and then i was like shit that's gonna be a lot of work so initially i tried to bring the band in but then i realized that it would be a fountains of wayne reunion which i didn't really feel was appropriate his songs speak for themselves you know and we're gonna do them too yeah well i love that you got all those different people uh, you know to play it just shows, uh, you know, just like the diversity of the, of the fans of your music and of Adam's work as well. Um, and what about yourself, Jody? What have you decided to perform? I'll, um, I'll let you guys guess what I'm going to do. Yeah, so you're going to leave it as a surprise. Okay, that's cool. I get it. Absolutely. Talk to me about what you are working on, though, currently. It looks like I'm trying to be Bob Barker or something and show you the... Uh... Dodge Durango or Drew Carey, who's actually on the show. But I put this thing out and it's coming out on vinyl. It's not quite baked yet, but it's a good record. And Brian, our drummer from Fountains of Wayne, is uh, on it. He co produced it with me, basically. So vinyl will be out, I think, in about three weeks' time. I'm excited to listen to your solo record. And so I'm going to be in touch with you to get a copy of that vinyl. I'll buy it. I don't have any problem with that. So I'll buy it and support. I'll get that because uh, I believe in supporting my, my musician friends. Fair enough, man. You know? But Jody, listen, I just want to say how great it is. I, you know, let you know how much I appreciate it. And I know that Adam's fans and your Fountain of Wayne's fans are, are, are so excited about this uh, event. And I just think it's really cool. I'm really happy that you got some friends together. Well, you saw it and I saw it from the get-go as well. And it's just like, whoa, okay. And um, yeah, man, it's a, it's a definite loss, but it's a definite gain of what he left us, you know. But this is going to be an incredible night, and I want to say say thanks, Jody. This is it was so great to have you, man. All right. It was great to talk to you again, Matt. Always, Jody. Thanks, Matt. All right, much love to you. Take care, Jody. We'll speak to you soon.